Hi guys, it's Fortress Locksmiths. Uh, today I thought I'd do a little video on the Stadham pick uh, for the Chug 3G 114s. Uh, there's a few videos out there showing, uh, you know, these getting picked with the Stadham, but no uh, videos really explaining how it works. So I thought I'd show you a little demo today on how the tool works, uh, how it interacts with the lock and uh, picking the lock open. Now, if you don't know what a Chubb 3G114 is, it's these little nasty bastards. Uh, they're very, very difficult to pick, uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've picked a few in my time, uh, but generally I just use the stabbing pick. Uh, this is one of the first ones I came across uh, when I first became a locksmith, and I could not pick it for the life of me. As you can see, I'll just turn this round. If you can see that there. <sighs> I ended up having to drill this particular one. Um, I was having absolutely no joy uh, picking it. And as you can see, I even missed the drill point for the first one. So I ended up having to drill two holes to get access to the levers and the gate. Uh, so yeah, these are really well made locks. Even when you get the binding order correct, you'll find that once you've picked a lever and you move on to the next, each lever will drop back down because the tolerances are so small in these locks. Um, so yeah, very very difficult to, uh, locks to master, uh, so anyone who can pick these at will, uh, fair play to you, that's why I use the stab and pick. So I've shown you what the 3G114 is, uh, this pick will work on the 3G114, the 3G114E, uh, 3K74, 3K75, which are basically just the sash lock versions of these with the roller bolt, uh, roller latch sorry. So yeah, uh, we've had a little intro on this, uh, so we'll move on to the actual pick itself. Hi right, guys, so this is the stab and pick set. Uh, you've got your pin and cam tool here, which is what you insert into the lock. I'll show you about that in a second. Very well made bit of kit. You've got these keys, which are to uh, reset the curtain, which is really important actually, by the way. Uh, I'll show you why in the demo video. Uh, I don't think I've seen anyone do these on any videos, but you do need to do these, otherwise you won't get a reading. Uh, reader key, which is basically depending on which way the lock is throwing, left or right, as you can see. Uh, that goes into the lock, turn it, get an impression of the belly of the levers, take it back out. Uh, tub of grease for the pin and can tool, plasticine obviously for your reader key. And then you've got <clears throat> three different uh, pin heights, A's, B's, C's, and also number ones, which I'll talk about soon. Uh, I don't think I've seen anyone mention them either, really, uh, but you do need to know about these. So the A heights are the highest pins, B's, middles, uh, C, the lowest set pins. Uh, so basically, this tool works on a pin and cam system. So if I just show you that there, so you've got seven holes. For the pins to go into as so uh, the beautiful thing about these tools i mean a better mind than mine made these up so we'll just put what we'll do is we'll pop five a pins in just so you can see there we go there we go all right so as you can see I've stuck five pins in. Now, if you look at the back of the, back of the tool, I'll pull it all the way out. You can see that numbered. One to seven. This is for each lever. Now, this tool can raise each pin individually. So, what I'll do is I'll turn the dial on number one, and you should see number one raise. See that? I'll push it back in, I'll move it to number two. You should see number two raise. There. Push it in. Number three. Push it in. Number four. And number five. And you can push them back down by your hand. And this is why the tool works so well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is set up the lock in device and uh, show you the principles on how it works hello so we're back now uh, so we're going to show the stabbing 3g11 pick in action uh, before we carry on it's worth noting that the chub lock has eight different lever heights uh, and this will 
determine what marks are made on the plasticine. Uh, it'll only make three different marks on the plasticine. No mark, small mark, or a slightly larger mark. And that's how you work out what pins to actually put in the lock. Uh, before we start, I've got a plasticine key made up there. Now if you put this in now, turn it against, that should go to 2 o'clock. If you notice, it doesn't quite go all the way, it has to. So, what do we do? This is where you need the curtain realignment tool, which is this. And as you can see, I've attached it to a set of more grips and you actually need these to turn the curtain as far as you need to go. So, what we'll do is we'll put it into the lock, turn. You can see how it's only stuck there. So what we'll do, give it a bit of a twist. There. You can see that now. So the curtain's ready to accept our plasticine makeup key. So, put a bit of spit. A little bit of water on the plasticine to stop it sticking to the levers. In we go. Turn, turn, press, off, and pull it out gently. Now, I don't know if you can quite see this. Come on, focus for me. There we go. So the mark furthest this way at the top so you can tell that's a B then there's no mark so that's an A then a B then a B and then an A so it goes B A B B A there we go so obviously I've already picked this lock before so I've already set it up there so you can see the pins corresponding a B A B B A now I'll just show you the sheet that came with it so you understand how it works inside the lock so I'll just turn that so there we are this is group A so this is how the levers sit once the pins are in so once I push that into the lock number one the anti-pit notch is going to be right next to the anti-pit notch on the stump number two is going to be nearly there and there we go so these are the group B pins and as you can see, when the group B pins sat inside the pick, number five lever is practically in its true gate, number four is just touching, and again, number three, the anti-pick notch is just there on the stump. And last but not least, group C, which is lever six, seven, eight, again, number eight lever is sat practically in its gate, number seven at the top, and number six also. So these are how the levers sit once the pins are inserted into the lock and this is why the pick works so well as you can see so we'll talk about anti-pick in a minute but the only uh, levers that will go into anti-pick using this tool is lever number one and lever number three and we'll talk about that in a minute and why you need the number one pins in case you do go into anti-pick so anyway without further ado I've set up the lock like this, set up the key, sorry, like this. So into the lock, turn, turn. And I don't know if you can see from there, but the levers are already sat up. So what we'll do is we'll pull it all out to zero, stop there. Now you can't see this on this video, but obviously uh, we're numbered one to seven. So we're going to push forward to number one. And all we do, apply finger tension. You can see the bolt there move slightly. Finger tension. And now we're going to turn all the way to the right. Bring it back. Move to lever two. All the way to the right. Bring it back. Lever three. All the way to the right. Lever four. All the way to the right. You wait it four back down. Lever five. And now... We work back, so we'll go to lever number four, all the way, three, two, one, and I can see now that one is set, so we'll go to two, set, three, four, five, and we've dropped a lever again, so what we'll do, start again. One, 
two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. Lock is turned. I don't know if you can see that there. Very stiff. Very, very stiff. But yeah, we've got the lock. And if we take it out, there we go. Pins exactly where they should be. Now, let's talk about anti pick. Like I said before, the only levers that will go into anti pick is lever number one and lever number three. So if you feel the bolt go and it moves forward, and you touch the lever and there's absolutely no movement, then you know that that's in anti-pick. Uh, therefore, if, say, if you can see this here, we know this is an A-pin. So if while that, that's in the lock, that goes into anti-pick, we take it out and we replace the A-pin with the number one pin. And that doesn't need to move at all then. And we know that's going to be at the correct height. Uh, and as I said before, the only other lever which will go into anti-pick is a lever number three and obviously you can tell by that if there's absolutely no movement so a lever number three would be a b uh, and if that was the case all you do is swap the b for an a and you don't touch that again um, and there you go and that's basically how you deal with anti-pick um, you don't need to worry about overlifting or anything like that because if the gate if the lever doesn't want to go into its gate it will push back down on the pin and you know it's self lubricating so after you've greased it up if say number one number one lever there which we know is in here if that doesn't want to go into its gate it will just push it will push back down but as i can see now it's already sat in its gate so we'll go to number two there three four and the levers have dropped and again like i said before this is why you have so much difficulty picking these by hand. So, so difficult. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, and I hope I explained it a bit more than other videos about how this pick works. Uh, I'll do another one with a 3K74 soon. Uh, so you can have another look at it in action. But what we can do... Ooh, take that out. Is... So, there's no cheating involved or anything like that. We can spin it round and we can pick it from the blind side. So, all we do is set the pins out. So, we're going to go... Set that out there. That out there. Bs. B. B. Right, I'll set this up in the next part of the video. So I've greased the tool up uh, and obviously I've applied the pins to the other side of the pick. There we go. So into the lock we go. Turn all the way to zero. Turn. Right, we're now we're in position there. So let's have a go. So straight away we go to three, four, Five, six, seven, six, five, four, three, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four. And there we go. We've got the lock. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching. And for me, it is goodbye.